also get a little hint of that. Um, but definitely in life, um, she she tries she tries to uh, to to trust her fellow Haibane, and then she puts some trust also in uh, Hyoko, um, and then she sees them disappear out of her life, so she tries to protect herself, or she sees them get hurt, and she doesn't want to hurt them. So both of those things, like you mentioned, Ashley. Um, okay, anyone else have anything to add about why she was uh, unable to salvation? Re remember what she says. She says, what if I ask from the bottom of my heart and there's no answer? Um, she, she, could not, she could not take that rejection or else, if you wanted to interpret this way, the confirmation that there was, you know, God was not interested in her or in, the salva or, or in her salvation. Uh, it was a, sort of a fear. And I think she, she confronted that in her previous life. But I'm, I'm sure we'll get to talking about what we know now about her previous life in a moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, and kind of along those lines, uh, what Recky's saying is somewhere along the way she got too caught up with Alpha, made problems from it. Yes, um, it kind of perpetuates, right? She gets deeper and deeper into her into her own shell. Um, so let's. Uh, Let's let's talk about uh, about um, this kind of these final scenes here in her uh, previous life. So, um, Recky starts uh, painting that room and trying to to remember her dream. What's the point of her trying to remember her dream? Because that's part of being like a complete haibane. Is all of the all of the sinbound haibanes don't remember what that's a, a key thing with them is they don't remember their dream properly. The dream, the dream is a key part of who the haibane are. I mean, it's where they get their name, especially at first. So, and what's important for Ricky is understanding what happened and embracing that so that she can deal with it. Um, dealing with it turns out more difficult, but until she deals with it and comes to terms with it and gets help, she can't. Uh, she can't really find that forgiveness and move on. Okay. And so um, and she does recover her, her dream, um, and uh, we kind of have this uh, interesting... Um, Interaction. Um, did did you understand the uh, um, so when Rekki first falls into her dream with the the train, um, she's talking to a younger version of herself. Um, does anyone know what that that younger version of herself is supposed to supposed to symbolize? Is that her now, her in the past, her before she became a Haibane? Uh, because really, you have you have two versions of her younger self, right? You have the one um, that starts falling apart and crumbling apart, and then you have the one that uh, that shows up later and that tries to hold Raka back. Uh, um, perhaps I should ask this: you, uh, Do you know what the difference is between these two selves? What they represent? I I actually think they're they're one and the same, um, and I think they represent Reki's will. Um, Reki, mm. I, I think I think Reki really deep down does want to escape from this, but her cynical self, her cynical older self, refuses, and as a result, the the proto Reki <coughs> turns into a turns into a, a a rock and begins to fall apart. Uh, when the proto Reki then grabs a hold of Raka. That's Reki's will. That that is her determination to mm -hmm. destroy herself again, and mm -hmm. and she will not let Raka. She 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 will not let Raka go because she is determined to throw herself in front of the train one more time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Perhaps it, it makes even further sense that when um when Reki finally says help me, um is able to, to run over there and, and help Raki. So maybe uh, her will um, finally led Raka in at that point. So, yeah, I, I like that interpretation. Are there any other interpretations of um, what they, these two might have represented or how they're different or the same? Um, why does... Um, 
So, so as she falls into the stream and Rocket comes after her, um, why does Reki, uh, you know, um, say all these awful things to? to is she is she telling her the truth, or is she chasing her away? Um, why is she uh, telling Rocket these things, and uh, does she mean them? What do you think? Um, I think she. I think she, what she's doing is, like, she is so sure that if Raka knew who she really was, that Raka would completely reject her. And she is, and, and if, 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 if you, do, if she, if you only accept someone because, and if you found out more about them than you rejected them, well, then you never truly accepted them in the first place. So she was seeking true acceptance in the back of her mind, but at the same time, she didn't ever believe that she would ever receive that. She thought that, that it was just impossible. So I think she was honest and when she said that a part of her, when she was trying to um, help Raka, I think part of her was she was doing it just to receive salvation, but another part of her, I think that was in the back of her mind, but I don't think it was completely that. Um, but yeah, I think when she says those things to her because they're partly true and because she just is seeking true acceptance. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you, Ashley. I'm pretty much exactly on point. Um, that reminds me of uh, that there being some truth reminds me of what the communicator says near the end of the series, uh, the end of the episode, and, and that's that. Um, I think the communicator says I'm getting a little bit uh, confused now, but um, that um, Reki trying to do all these good things for Shin ends up becoming that type of person who really wants to do these things. You know, while she may be using Raka, and that's her intention, she actually does care for Raka. You know, um, I don't know if any of that in your your everyday life, but um, I, I guess in the past uh, ten or twelve years, where I've been attending small groups regularly. Um, I hear this a lot, and that's people bringing up the question of um, whether you should, um, you should, uh, so if your heart is not in it, or are it hard to be in it before you serve the, the church. Um, and uh, a lot of people say this, and that's if you, uh, and that's not always true, but if you do serve, if you do do things that are right, eventually your heart will follow along. And so I think um, we see something similar here with uh, with Reki in that um, she she's so fearful of uh, not attaining salvation, and she's just doing everything to try to attain salvation. But her character is that she does love, you know. And so in doing these actions out of a selfish intent, um, she really does have a, a good um, a good heart behind them. I think she um, she definitely disciplined herself. I How think about, it's let's, go to, let's go to Raka, though. Um, so at that point, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Ashley. You can... hmm? No, go ahead. I think there's a little bit of um, lag with the audio. Do you hear me? Oh, okay. Um, I think... Oh crap, crap! I forgot. I forgot, Charles. He had to go on. I forgot. Go ahead, Ashley. I'm sorry. He had to go on. I forgot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh, there is a major okay. lag. Um, okay, <laughs> so uh, if you remember, Ashley, go ahead and just chime in. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I was gonna start to. I'm going to uh, start talking about uh, Raka a little bit now. Um, so, uh, so at that point where uh, Reki is telling uh, Raka all these awful things, uh, Raka leaves. Um, but then um, she ends up going back. Why is it that um, Raka, who's been hurt by this whole conversation, and she even tells herself um, uh, in so many words that Raka thought she was, why does Raka eventually go back? She reads Reki's diary and sees where Reki's heart is the good and that she really does care for Raka and even before she knew who Raka was, wanted to care for her. And rem she remembers what Reki said to her while she was still in the cocoon. Mm -hmm. 
That's true. Um, she does see that there's some. Um, uh, there really is. Uh, Recky really is deep down the person she thought she was. Um, but also, what is this about Raka? Uh, would the Raka at the beginning of the series uh, perhaps uh, do something like this? I think at the beginning of the series she would have accepted rejection. I agree. Um, the uh, one thing we see in the the series, while Reki may be the central character, um, you know, in the end, really, it's a story about about her redemption and Raka's redemption helps lead to that. Um, but what we see from uh, Raka is really uh, maturity and growth. You know, um, she begins the series as very uh, kind of selfish, very. Um, um, you know, she's she definitely uh, has all these troubles from her past life. Um, but as she goes on through the series, she grows and grows. And at this point, she really has a choice where she can continue to uh, just superficially love Reki, you know, and, and abandon her um, at this point in time. But then she makes the decision uh, to go ahead and love even though it hurts. You know, and that's kind of what... Um, you know, Christians are called to do. We're called to love even when um, it isn't something uh, that's easy to do. And we're called to emulate Christ who did the same thing. Okay, let's, uh, uh, I, let's look at some of these comments on this. Um, go ahead. I think that's one thing that kind of upset me about Rock. Like, that um, episode, I didn't like it because I'm just like, my question is, if she hadn't read that about Reki in Reki's diary, would she have gone back for Reki? And I'm like, okay, if you wouldn't have gone back for Reki, you never really loved her in the first place. Like, if, if and that, that was what kind of, I'm like, okay, I understand that she is, was acting very selfish, but I don't know, it's like she had to read that, if she hadn't read that in her diary, would she have gone back? I guess that's my question. That was my question when I watched that episode. I, I, I think in, 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 in answer to that, uh, first off, um, she is sitting outside of Reki's room and she's saying, in, in the Japanese, she's saying, Usada, Usada, that means that's a lie, that's not true. She, she, she wants, and remember, she says something along the lines of, she wants to believe the good things about Reki. But Reki's just told her, basically, has just thrown her out of her room, and Raka's just very unsure. Remember, it's the also the there, there's sort of this, if you will, divine intervention that blows the cover off of the painting of Kuramori, and in 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 looking at it, she sees the diary back there, and there's there's a long explanation as to what happens to Haibani who go over the wall, but one of them is that they they watch over. Uh, and this is from one of the art books on Haibani Renme. They watch over the uh, Haibani who are in in in, in 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 later years. So presumably this this was actually meant to happen. Uh, Raka was rejected. She accepted it, to some extent that rejection. There was a, this divine intervention that that blows the cover off. She finds the the diary and then takes action based on the finding of the diary. It wasn't accidental at all in my mind. It's an, it, it, was, it was all planned and she just needed that push to, to realize that Reki really did want her help. That and um, I agree with Charles too <coughs> that um, she would have eventually gone back. I mean that's what I would hope. Um, you know Raka is, uh, is naive and then they're all of course still very young so you would think that uh, she thought about the same situation and realized, well, you know, Reki is in dire straits here. Of course, she's um, saying all these things. You would hope that Raka would go back, but regardless, um, and possibly through the divine intervention, like Bob mentions, she does make the right decision there. So, so that was good. <laughs> um, what? And back to Reki. Um, so R Raka does go back at this point. She finds herself in the dream, um, and uh, she's being held back by the the vision of um, 
Recky's younger self while Recky is in front of the train that's uh, bearing down on her. Um, what do you think was it that changed Recky at the last possible minute? So all this time, and in fact for seven years, um, Recky has refused to ask for anyone's help. Why is it now that she asked for salvation at the last moment? I think a part of her always had hope that I, I actually always had that hope and that's why I think it's one of the reasons why she never just said you know uh, forget this and just did whatever she wanted she was always even if it was like her trying to earn her salvation she was always had hope that somehow she could get a salvation and at that last moment like she's like okay this it is she like she was pushed to the point where she had to act on that teeny tiny bit of po a hope that she had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, Frank, definitely. Frank brings up a good point. Mm -hmm. yes. Go ahead. Bob. Yeah. Well, no, I was going to say Frank. Frank brings up a very interesting point about Midori who of course comes in episode 12 and, and they have a reconciliation after all these years. Uh, remember, Midori was sort of uh, Hyoko's groupie at Old Factory. Um, and, uh, and Midori throughout the series really despises Reki. But I think secretly in her heart she, she, she understands you know, where Reki is coming from and of course they have the reconciliation in episode 12. I think that's a, I think that's a very good point. The, the the other thing, and I, I I you know might as well bring the subject up now. Recky, in her first life, I believe that every indication is she she committed suicide, throwing probably throwing herself in front of a train. Um, in this life, she's in exactly the same situation, and I think somewhere along the line, the thought of this didn't work out the first time. Why am I doing it again? Or I shouldn't do this again. How can I break out of this? Must have come to her, because uh, she was bound and determined to get, you know, to to disappear, to to you know, get, kill herself again. And at the last moment, when faced with that, she's like, you know, and and sometimes that's what's necessary. Sometimes it's necessary to bring people to the brink of disaster in order to get them to change their 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 minds about their course, uh, chosen course of action. Absolutely, and Charles mentions that on the site too, that it's the urgency of the situation. Ashley alluded to that also, that um, finally faced with, uh, you know, a, another death in the same situation, um, she finally reached down and did what she needed to do. Perhaps some of this is also spurred on by um, the first visage of herself that she has, that uh, the crumbling figure that um, tells uh, Recky that, um, well, you never asked for help, you know. Um, Recky's been hurt all the time. She's shut herself out. Um, she refuses to go to other people. Um, and I think maybe we can all um, um, we can all put ourselves in that situation or have been in that situation where we're just self-pitying, you know. We want someone to reach out to us, you know. Um, we have to reach out to others sometimes and, and let them know that we need them. And at that point, those who have been and, and, and help us and rescue us possibly. So I think also help with the situation. Any other thoughts about why, uh, about Recky's uh, choice? Well, I, I did have one thing, like, about Recky's name, actually. Because, um, and, and kind of the way her life was, because her name means, her name meant small stone, right? And then her real name that the guy gave the communicator gave her meant torn apart or whatever. It's interesting to me because like th thinking about this, those kind of situations, like what she tried to become was this stone, this unbreakable stone that could like withstand anything. And through the, all these actions that she felt like she was becoming the strong person that could kind of like do on her own, earn on her own through those actions. And I think that kind of like, similar situations I guess in my life like where I, these actions that I think I'm taking that are actually that I think are protecting myself and making me like the strong stone they're actually the very actions that are tearing her apart so it's like that are leading her to this really self-destructive all your attempts at self-preservation 
actually just lead to you destroying yourself. <laughs> Good point. Anyone else? Um, we kind of covered this, but let's let's just emphasize this since it was so important. Um, um, what did it mean for Reki's true name to have changed? Her, ident what did her identity mean? had changed. She was no longer sin bound. Um, she's no longer yeah, she's no longer sin bound. She was a different person. Uh, the burden was gone. It was saved. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Um, those are the main I wanted to talk about with these episodes. I have some um, some uh, things I want to talk about in general about the series, um, but um, there was so much there was so much in these uh, these last few episodes. I want to open it up to you all and say, uh, um, was there anything that um, really stood out to you that we haven't already spoken about tonight that you want to discuss? At the point. Um where she, um, where her name changes to Guiding Stone, like I almost started crying at that point because I saw so much. Like it, it's kind of like goes back to that thing, because um, the whole time she was Recky, the whole time she was the stone. It's like you give God what you are, and He turns it into something beautiful, something that's not only beautiful for your life, but that shines and like is an example for other people's li lives and helps them to change. So that was so powerful to me. And Recky to me is so much, she reminds me so much of Peter because like he, when I mess up and I feel like I can't go back, like that story mm -hmm. with um, um, when after he denied Jesus three times like that, he was a, he's a guiding stone and he, his name also means, means rock, doesn't it? Peter does. Yeah. And uh, he is like that guiding stone that like you can go back. There is hope. Like you, if you mess up, it's not the end. And it's like she is that guiding stone for all sin bound Haibane. That like there is hope. It's like that hope and that guidance. That was oh my god, I loved that part. That was my favorite part of the whole series when they said her real name. <laughs> Yeah, no, that was very powerful. Those, and I'm glad you brought up action. I actually wrote a, I wrote a post about this a few years ago. The, the similarity is between uh, Recky and Peter when it comes to the names um, and what they mean and and their experiences and their changes. So that's that was all very powerful. I agree. Oh, uh, I need to go back to the archives um, and read that. Any then. other comment on that or? Um, anything we definitely have some time to discuss uh, some more about these last few episodes here. For for those of you who just can't get enough of uh, of this series, um, I'm about to paste a link here to um, if I can get it to work. I'm about to paste a link to um, a, a a bulletin board. Um, called Old Home Bulletin Board. Um, it's been in existence since 2003. I've been a member since 2004. There is a lot, a lot, a lot of discussion on all different aspects of the series. Um, just, just if anybody ever wants to, you know, go there, bookmark it. Um, it's, uh, it's not pretty quiet nowadays because the series is 10 years old and not a whole lot of you know, new, new stuff's coming out about it, but it's got a lot of great resources. It has just about all the episodes translated from their original Japanese, because uh, because words are very important um, in the study of what's going on, the study of sort of the, the, the world of Gary. So I'm just tossing that out there for anybody who, you know, after, after this discussion is over, wants to go and, and read some more. Thanks, Bob. I'll... Um uh, I'll do a final email and I can put that link in there also. So uh, um, I'll have that again too. Um, 
Anything else here about these live episodes? Um, well, let's uh, look at the series um, kind of from a broad aspect and um, uh, just close by talking about some of the major themes here. Um, if you had to do um, give uh, one major theme for the series, what would you say the theme of Haibane Renmei is? Um, okay, I'll, I think the theme is, is stated, I believe it's in episode 7, um, and, and it's the question that's asked at, at the end, and that is, what are the Haibane? And that's a question that is asked and never really answered. We're never really given a satisfactory answer, but what we're invited to do is take a look at the way that the hi these individual Haibani transform uh, in Guri. You know, we, we don't see Raka take her day, or f day of flight. That's, you know, obviously she hasn't undergone the last of her trials. Um, we see Nemu at the end looking the the, out the same way Ku did in episode 6, just about ready to take her day of flight. Um, all of these things, you know, it's, it's, it, the, the, the whole thing is, it invites us to look at some of the, 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 the mystery of existence and, you know, some of these issues, and I'll reiterate that I think that, that uh, Abe has tapped into the Tao as, uh, as C.S. Lewis understands it, into, into some of the, you know, predicate that exists above all other predicates. Um, and, and so, to, to me, that's really, the, that, that's really the theme. It is, what, 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 what is your interpretation? What do you see here? And what, what are these things? And the author refuses to answer. He leaves it up, up to us. Good. Right. Good. Anyone else? I would agree with that, and also with what um, Charles was saying about rebirth. It seems like a lot of it is cycle of life, but including all the mysteries of it and everything. Uh, I mean, it ends the way it begins with finding a cocoon. Also, in that last episode or episode before the last, we see uh, that one librarian's baby's finally here. And just episode before that, um, she was talking about the mystery of how, um, you know, how she had that life that was in um, in her womb at the time. And so it seems like to be a lot of the mystery, the question, the rebirth, but it's all just the, the mystery and the reliability of the cycle that goes on. Good. That's a good one, too. Anyone else? Certainly, if we're, if we're focusing on uh, the story and Raka's particularly, um, we see the message of hope. Um, both of them, um, both Raka and Reki, uh, feel hopeless. Um, they feel that they can't be forgiven. Um, they don't know how to be forgiven. Um, in both cases, they found redemption, um, and there was hope when they, they thought there was none. So. Uh, that's certainly a theme of the series. Awesome. Any other uh, themes or major ideas? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, and uh, I, I like both of these uh, comments on the side. One thing that, um, as I watch this series, that, uh, that I thought was, you know, we look at like a, a series um, like a, like Evangelion again, um, going back to that, and uh, and sometimes there's a message of hopelessness when you see a character like Shinji who uh, has so many uh, issues and so many troubles, um, and then we go to a series like this where we have a, a number of characters that have so many issues and so many troubles. But instead of um, giving us a sometimes depressing bleak picture, this takes that depressing bleak picture and offers hope. So I think it's a very positive series for a lot of people to watch. And Charles, um, I think this is a major, major theme that you bring. Um, you know, helping out. He and Raka both are inherently selfish people. 
Um, but um, part of the way that salvation is through, or found salvation is through others loving them, and they in turn love others, and that affects other people as well. So um, definitely uh, loving others, and then there's so many minor little things in the, almost every episode of people helping each other and developing relationships and the high bunny, how closely together they grow. So um, helping each other and loving each other, that's definitely a major thing. Anyone else? I do want to share a little bit tonight before we, uh, before we uh, finish our session. So um, before we go into that, this is a last opportunity to, to talk a little bit about uh, Haibane Renmei before we, uh, we close it. Frank has a theme also that he's giving. I feel that it does have... I think that's a really great thing to, to talk about too and what does freedom really mean? Um, you know? I feel that it does have a lot to do with reincarnation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I wish I it before this. Um, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Head right. I keep. Uh, I keep over you. But some of the other animes that Yoshitoshi Abe has made. Um, like Kino no Tabi, Serial Experiments, like, they kind of tie in with this. So I'm still always thinking more about the meaning of this show. Yeah, those are, those are kind of two uh, separate things about the meaning and and necessarily, and some of the themes, um, yeah, reincarnation definitely you could say that. And as has been has has been expressed, Abe has said, um, you know, that he wasn't thinking about a particular religious structure going into this show, even though it's heavily spiritual. Um, and reincarnation, you must imagine, went went through his mind as he was drafting this show because, so that's that's uh, obvious a thought process that or a thought um, that's uh, very common in Japan. So. Um, definitely that's in there. They are uh, reborn, reincarnated. Um, you can, you can uh, definitely, uh, um, and it, it would be interesting if we had time to, or, uh, or I had taken time to really look at Serial Experiments Lane, which is another one of my favorite series, um, and really investigate that. Um, Kino's Journey, interesting series, and actually if I, if I was to do another uh, study like this, um, I would probably pick Kino's Journey to delve into because there is a lot of, each episode is full of uh, great themes. So that's, um, that's a recommend if you have that series. Kino's, uh, Kino or Kino's Journey is a really, uh, um, anyone else have anything else to add before we, uh, before we go into sharing time a little bit? All right. Hey, um, that's it. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, the, uh, I had watched uh, Haibane Ren May for the first time a few years ago, and I've seen the last episode a number of times since then. Rewatched it a number of times, but um, I hadn't. Um, uh, I, I'd forgotten much, a whole lot of it before rewatching it this time. So it was uh, it was good for me to, to watch it. I hope those of you who rewatched it also enjoyed it, and those of you who watched it for the first time also liked it. Um, well, that's good. So I'm glad that a few of you might join us again. The, the thing with Kino's, Kino's journey is really hard to find online, <laughs> so um, so it might prevent that. But uh, but yeah, it's it's very meaningful series as far as Frank was here. Um, and each is like packed full to the brim, full of uh, symbolism and so forth. Um, it's something to worth worth watching on your own, even if we don't do this together. Um, 
uh, for sharing time tonight, or final sharing time, um, I want to do this. Um, a, be, let's do. Let's be a little different. And um, uh, first of all, just kind of what's uh, what's been going on the last have a meeting. But then also, uh, it's your prayer request for um, whether it's near future or or something, perhaps thinking uh, somewhere distant. Um, for a final email where I send out prayer requests, um, I want us to. Um, hopefully, this will be an email you might return to every once in a while, and and see what um, what we like, um, what we like uh, for all of us to be praying about. So think about something that um, you may uh, want us to pray about ongoing into the future. Please, uh, please again for going on the last few weeks, and then any prayer requests you have that may be um, um, the the nearer distance. Um, I'll I'll go ahead and go first. Um, so I did get from uh, from uh, it was great, um, Frank. I'm sorry we couldn't meet up. Um, it was crazy packed full. So um, uh, we had a really good time and um, to normal life now. Or um, I'm actually going to be teaching a uh, a class in my um, my church in the fall um, that has to do with um, uh, a, um, culture. How we, uh, how we, um, how we are Christian in the culture. So you know, a lot of people will will want to will want to turn away from culture totally or embrace it fully. But most people are somewhere in between. So I want to talk about that. Um, really is involved with a lot of what I do online here with this small group and with um, with blogging and so forth. So, so um, that's what's going on. But I have a request. Um, um, always, I'm looking for patience with my family and more um, self-control with my emotions. Um, I'm really uh, sometimes, so um, that's something I definitely want to work on. So I ask for prayer with that. Um, and yeah, that, that's my big prayer request. Um, let's see. Um, let's. Uh, uh, um, and by the way, Charles and Frank and Recky, um, feel free to share any time on the, in the chat panel also. But Ashley, please go ahead. Um, well, the last couple of weeks I decided that um, I needed to start. I'm going to start looking for a new job. Um, I've kind of... I've been looking at a couple jobs. There's a, a PR, a couple PR jobs. One in a school system, and uh, one for a, like a water supply. I'm uh, sorry, water conservation person. Because I just, I feel like this is not a place I want to spend the rest of my life. It's, it, it, there's no one here my age. I live in a very small southern town. Um, where I really cannot relate to the majority of people around me. And so I've been thinking a lot about that, and that's kind of scary because um, even though I'm not happy here, I, it's scary to think of something new. So that, so I guess just pray about that, that I can find a job that, like, you know, God wants me to have and uh, that I won't be, like, too scared to actually go through it, and then just continue to pray for my family's salvation. I want that more than anything in the world. <laughs> That's it for me. Okay, um, thank you. Um, and I asked on the side, do you now want to stay in uh, journalism, Ashley? Um, I want to go to the other side because, like, a PR person, like, for, I would be, it would be, like, media relations. So, um, journalism can be very stressful, uh, especially the political side covering, um, politicians <laughs> is my least favorite part, uh, very angry politicians. So, uh, I really want to get away from that. It's very draining. Yeah. Okay. Um, 